guys, this is Mia from Mima Design Laser Files, and today I'll show you how to finish and assemble this St. Patrick's Day countdown. Um, when you get the file, you have a spinner, you have some layering. You could either keep it one layered, or you could add this one. It has a front, and it has a back with a hanger, but it also has a back without the hanger for magnets. So assembling is easy. I already pre-painted these. I'll show you in the end of the tutorial how I painted them. But place your bagger. When you get the file, it's important that you sense the spinner, not this inner part, but the spinner on both sides and make it smooth. Also, the back of the back and the back of the front. So place your wheel and add your um, inner part. You can assemble it in different ways. Uh, the important part is that this one is a little bit bigger than the spinner itself. So some people uh, use some cardboard or a piece of plastic or some thicker material for the inner round. What I do is that I use a stapler. I have this stapler. I'll link a similar version in the, the comments. So when you're using a stapler, you actually don't need to add glue to the back. So I'll just place this. And give, give it some staples. So the staples is just enough to lift your wood a tiny bit so the spinner will move easily. Once you have the spinner or the inner in place, I use wood glue, but because this is the tutorial, I will use some um, super glue as well to make it dry faster. So add some glue. Don't overdo it because you don't want to get glue on the edge. And to make it a little faster, I'm also adding some super glue from Gorilla. And I'll place my count down here. So you want it to be aligned so your lever is in this position. You could see if I do like this that it will match on both sides. So you want the clover to be somewhere aligning to the hanger. So I think I have that here. And I'll just use some clamps to hold it. And let's just wait for it to dry. While it's drying, you can assemble the pot of gold. I'll just use super glue for this one. And align it to the side and the other side, like that. One thing that you could actually do before assembling the ornament is to glue this one on top because the Happy St. Patrick's Day should be leveled out. And it is. So I think this was good enough aligned. 
but you probably want to add the pot of gold before assembling. I actually think that it is dry already. It's a good thing that it was placed right. So once it's dry, you want to make sure that your lever is turning as it's supposed to. Mine is. So you can now go ahead and glue the little clover on top. And this is an outline, so you don't want to glue it all the way down to the edge. Leave a little room. And all done. So assembling is very easy and fast to do. You can paint it like I did, or you could just stain it and leave it simple. That's entirely up to you. But this is an easy project and it's all up to you how much you want to decorate it. So let's move on to how I painted this if you're interested. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Let's go ahead and show you how I would paint this new St. Patrick's Day ornament counting down to St. Patrick's Day ornament. So the files contain pretty much the same as all my other spinners. Um, what I want to do first is to color fill the engravings. Color filling is pretty easy when you do it like this. I just take my acrylic paint markers and kind of paint inside the engravings. Okay, so my paint markers, I tried the acrylic paint markers first, then I took a metallic marker, but these are all most empty, so instead I took one of these push and paint markers, because I can push down the paint inside the engraving, so this was a little bit easier than the ones I originally used. So once you're done, it looks something like this, and it does look like a mess, but don't worry. Once it's dry, I'll take my black and just kind of wipe it over, and you won't be able to, uh, to see the paint. So I want my gold coins to be gold as well, so I'll just take my regular acrylic marker and just wipe them over. The great thing about using acrylic paint markers on scored items is that if you don't push too hard it will not get stick inside the scoring. Like that. So the kettle is halfway done. Let's push these aside. So for my ornament bagger, I have these metallic watercolors that I bought from Flying Tiger Copenhagen. And I want to see if I can use my green to create a beautiful bag. So I'm using a foam brush. You could use a regular brush too. I'm just thinking that this will be a little faster. And I just wipe over. And painting with watercolor is an awesome idea as well because when you have scored text, it will just kind of wipe over and not bleed into the text. So 
So I'll let these dry and just grab a towel. So good as new. For the spinner, I want to paint the clover because it will be visible. So again, I'm using my marker and I offset these so you can paint them inside. And you just paint them kind of like a coloring book or something like that. There you go. And also the little clover for the lever. And if you want to make a little more effects, these are double-sided markers. You could use the other color in the other end to make some little effects. So that's my clovers. See if I can give this another coat now. So for the little lever part, it will be sticking out. So I want to paint that as well. The back and front. You could also stain these or paint them. You could do whatever you like. I just like experimenting with new steps. So I'll let this rest here. And back to my color filling. I think this might be dry. Not exactly. I have this little heat gun, so I'll just give it a little heat. That helped. So now that it's dry, you take your black acrylic paint pen and you just wipe it over. Be careful that you don't get stuck inside the engravings. If you do, you can just take your gold marker or white or green or whatever you're using and repaint it. I'm not sure if this gold color is too dark against the black so i'll just see when it's done and maybe i'll do white instead so i can actually see already that this will be too dark for me anyway so i'll see what will happen if i make it gray instead of black Okay, so what happened now is that I used my black, then I used this dark gray, and I also think that that was too dark, so I used my light gray. So now, now I've kind of blended three colors, and I'm actually pretty satisfied with this result. So I'll keep going with that, paint it black, then use my gray, and then use my light gray to kind of highlight it. Okay, so I've been playing around a little with my three colors, black, dark gray and light gray. And I'm not sure if I'm totally finished, but I do like it. Also, I used my lighter, lightest uh, gray to kind of apply some highlights and also I painted the edge. So for the rim, you can use it or you can choose not to use it. Oops, it goes this direction. Um, this is just an extra, but you do have scored lines that will 
indicate so you could make it one layer but i would prefer to use this so i'll paint it black and play a little around with this one with the colors as well use some of my dark gray and use some of the light gray to kind of give it a little 3d effect okay i think i have the colors for this jar of gold now um, i still want to highlight it just a tiny bit so i'll use my white and just kind of follow the edge like that and on the other side as well also on the inside of my clover so you just kind of angle your marker and if you get too much you could also always take your darker markers again and wipe them over so what i'll do as well is to just carefully touch around the letters here and see if i can make them pop up okay so i'm pretty satisfied with my color now but i want to give it a little shading so i'll use my chalk paint just a tiny amount like this and i'll take something to kind of dab it off so i don't have a lot this is not white white it's a, a little um what do you call this color it's off white so i'll just kind of dab my way through the edges And you don't have to spend as much time on this as I'm doing. You could just stain it or I just like to take my time and experiment. So I'm using this to also just brush it slightly over. And it's starting to look a little aged. So that's kind of how I want it to look like. Also, because I'm using my chalk paint, it will take off some of the shiny uh, acrylic paints. And I'm not much into shiny. I like everything to be matte so i almost don't have any paint on my brush when i'm doing this so i'm just kind of wiping over everything and with this technique i actually think i could have done the black exclusively and just made these effects afterwards and because i have my edges visible i'll just apply a little on those as well that 
and obviously for the rim I want to do the same but the other direction There you go. Now I just need something to touch up on my coins. So I did use gold. That was a little too much. I did use gold, um, but I have several colors of gold. So I'll take one. I use this one. So I'll take another one, I have metallic ink markers as well, and see if I can make some different color options by just touching the edge of the coin. And I want to do these edges as well. I think I have to use the other end. So you might see now how there's two colors of gold in this one. Also, I did the edge around it. So when it's assembled, it will look like this. And the metallic is dry as well. So for assembling it's easy as I just showed you in the beginning of the video but I'll just repeat it very fast here so you can see how this will look like. So it will look something like this. I still need my hanger. So I'll just give that a little gold as well. And I actually think I'll have some gold on my lever instead of the metallic watercolor. Like that. So let's just see how the clover will look like. This is cute. I might play a little around with the back still um, but this is in general how i made this one so thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel uh, mimo design laser files my helping group laser up with mimo design and all my files can be found on mimo design laser files on etsy or allstars.com